Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about line integrals and vector fields, which is exactly what we did in the last section. But in this section, I'm going to present you with what you'll probably see in your textbook, which is just an alternative way of writing that down. It's another way of writing down the line integral in a vector field. Um, does exactly the same thing, by the way. There's really no difference to it. It's just that some of the problems you'll see written in this form, and it's important for you to recognize what it looks like so that when you see it, you'll know that you're doing a line integral, you'll know that you're doing it in a vector field, and it'll show you how to kind of tackle that. But to preface the whole section here, uh, the most important thing to remember is you're doing exactly the same thing as the last section. It just looks a little bit different the way it's written down. I'll show you why it looks a little bit different, but it's exactly the same concept. Okay, so go back to the last section, watch that about the vector fields and the line integrals in the vector fields and you're going to be doing exactly the same thing here. So let me go ahead and get started here and kind of lead you up and show you why this form is exactly what you already have done in the last section and then we'll work some problems to kind of show you how to deal with it, okay? So recall that you can write a vector field. We've been doing this, uh, you know, forever. You can write a, a vector field um, in the following way. Some m in the i direction plus some n in the j direction plus some p in the k direction, okay? Don't, don't be scared by the m, the n, and the p. All, all it means is m is really a function of x, y, and z, n is a function of x, y, and z, and p is a function of x, y, and z. So what we're really saying here is a vector field has an i and a j and a k direction, and every little component is a function of three-dimensional space, okay? This notation, m, n, and p, is only used because if you start writing out uh, m is a function of x, y, and z, and n is a function of x, y, and z, and have everything kind of written out in explicit detail, then you're going to have equations that are really big. So what they do is they just use this little notation to kind of compact things a little bit um, because, you know, that way it's easier to write it down on your paper. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. But this is nothing different than the vector field you've already seen. It's just I'm using the letter n to represent whatever I write in front of i, n to represent whatever I write in front of j, and p to represent whatever I write in front of, of uh, K, but don't forget that M is, is just uh, is really a function of X, Y, and Z. So there's a function of X, Y, and Z here, a different function of X, Y, and Z here, and a different function of X, Y, and Z here. That's your vector field, okay? So this is what we've been writing as a vector field all along. I'm just using some abbreviations to help you out, and I think you'll see why we do that here in a second. Now, the path that the particle takes, because remember, every line integral um, is, is doing, you know, your, your particle's taking some path through the vector field and what the integration is doing is it's, um, it's looking along that path and it's integrating that as, as you go along that path, okay? The path is described by a parametric function r that we talked about in the last section and r is also a vector uh, and, and it's, it has some, it's, it's a function of time. So here, here's what you have in, front, in the i direction. We usually write y of t in the j direction and z of t in the k direction. This is exactly what you've seen in the last section. So, so don't, you know, don't think I'm trying to present something here that you haven't already seen before. t is usually allowed to go from some number a to some number b. So this is exactly what we have from before. So you can see that as you put a different value of time in, your vector is basically going to point to a different location because each of these are functions of time, different functions of time, I might say. And so when you plug in a different value of time, your, your vector is going to point to a different location, and that is what traces out the path of the particle. This little thing is how you actually pick the path that you're on. So your path is, is, a, is a parametric equation called 